Hey there, my name is Kelly Dale with Off The Beaded Path. Thanks so much for watching my brand new video, which is the Reflecting Pool Pendant. This pendant is going to piggyback off of what we learned from the Bursting Flowers Pendant a few months ago. The Bursting Flowers Pendant was a video that I have got the most questions from out of any video that I've ever done. So I wanted to come up with a project that might help you to understand that project a little bit more and at the same time be totally new and completely different. So I hope this project will do that for you. Please understand that there are some materials that I'm going to use in this project that are specific to this project, which means that if you use any other brand or any other substitution for a bead, you're not going to get the same results, okay? So please, please, please understand that. Also, any kit or product that I talk about in this video is sold on a temporary basis. Colors and kits are subject to change at any time, and please be advised that any promotion or sale that I may speak of in this video are date specific and may not be available at the time that you watch this video. Before I jump in to the materials list today, I just wanted to give you a really quick update on the Key for a Cure project that I did back at the beginning of the summer of 2018. Basically, the whole point of that project was to help raise funds to donate to a specific cause. And many of you helped me with that. I wanted to reach a goal of being able to donate $500. And because of your purchases of patterns, kits, keys, we were able to do that. I was so excited. We did the, um, the donation back in early August and our newspaper even did a article on it um, about the Be Your Own Beautiful program. So um, this was what we actually donated the money to. It's a cancer program for people who are going through the beginning stages of their treatment. And basically this teaches them how to, um, you know, um, style their wig if they're going to have to wear a wig, how to put on makeup that their skin is going to change. So how to, you know, deal with the changing skin textures and how to put on makeup and just all of that. And it is a wonderful free program that our county offers in many other counties. Um, we actually made this donation in honor of one of our good friends, Debbie Spina. And so I am so happy that the money that you guys helped me raise and we were able to donate is gonna go to help other people who are fighting cancer. So thank you so much for your help in that cause. Now, on to our next project. So, what I'm going to be using today is a 25 millimeter backlit glass cabochon. So, here's one really important thing you need to know about this. Well, actually, two. Okay, so the first thing is these backlit cabochons have a silver backing to them. So, I called the distributor of these cabochons and I said, hey, listen, have you had any problems with the color coming off of these? And they said, well, nobody's called to complain about it except for one person and they had to return a package of them. Well, you know me, I had to test this stuff out. So basically what I did was I was working on this project over this past weekend and we were out of town. So I took one of the cabochons and was working with it. I didn't get finished, so I just threw it in a bag with some other stuff I was working on, carried it home, and when I pulled it back out, the back of the piece had gotten scratched. So from the back, it didn't look that bad, but when I flipped it over and I looked on the front side, you could see anywhere that there was a scratch in that piece. So what I would say is that you really want to protect the backing of these cabochons. Um, these cabochons are backlit, which means that all of your color is gonna be on the back behind that silver backing. So I would either, one, coat it with fingernail polish, clear fingernail polish, that would be one option. Option two would be to stitch all around the back of your pieces so that way it protects. The only thing I will caution you about that 
I would worry that even the beads might scratch the bottom of your piece and you'll be able to see that on these caps. So what I have personally done and what I'm really gonna suggest everyone do is I'm actually going to put a backing of foundation, beading foundation. This is um, Lacey's Stiff Stuff. You can use that. Um, I'm using the Beadsmith brand beading foundation, but I've glued the beading foundation on with E6000 glue and then just trimmed it. That's all I've done, okay? So this will permanently protect the back of my piece and I'm not gonna have to worry about it. Um, if you purchase a kit, you will get enough, a little square, so that you can glue this on um, if that's what you choose to do. But that's very, very, very important. And I'll show you why um, on the one that I did as one of my samples, so you'll see um, why that is so important to protect the back. The second thing I want to tell you about the size cabochon that you're going to use is that if you use any other size, so say you use a 24 or a 28 or a 27, you may have to change the, well, you're gonna have to change the counts of your circular part, but then you're also gonna have to change the counts on the outside edging because if you do change the size of your cap, it's gonna affect that. So just be aware of that. The other thing I'm going to be using is, and I'm going to use two colors of a size 11 seed bead. These seed beads can be Toho or Mayuki. Either brand will work. You're going to need two grams of the two colors. You want one to be a color A, and that's going to be what we're actually going to encase the piece with, and you'll need one for the color B, and that's going to be for our second layer of right angle weave and our embellishment. You're going to need one gram of a size 15 seed bead. Again, that can be a Toho or a Mayuki seed bead. The other major thing you're going to need that most of you probably are not going to have in your stash but is important to this piece is a true to fire polish bead. So if you'll remember the hoopla earrings that I showed a few months ago, we used a two millimeter fire polish bead. It's a two millimeter, it's marketed as a two millimeter, but actually it's more like a 2.25, okay? So it's a little bit bigger than a two. A true two fire polish bead is the only true two millimeter bead on the market as of today, which is September the 6th of 2018. Okay, so just be aware of that. So a true two, um, you know, your regular fire polish bead is more of an oval shape. Your true two looks like they've taken and chopped the ends off of it. So it's a circular shape, but it's more um, chopped off rather than an oval shape. So that's really important. I had my tester test um, trying to put another bead in place of it, which was a size eight seed bead. It worked out up until a certain point and I will show you pictures of that so you'll be able to see what it looks like if you try to substitute a bead in for that. Otherwise, you're gonna need three yards of 1G thread. Now, you can use Fireline, but just be aware, if you use Fireline, it may make your encasement smaller because you're gonna pull it tighter, so it may make it smaller and you may not be able to have it easy of a time encasing this stone. I found that the 1G seems to work best. The great thing about 1G is it comes in all sorts of different colors for you. I'm gonna use a size 12 needle and the only other thing that I might suggest that you would need would be a dowel rod, okay? This is a wooden dowel, it's a one inch dowel. It is not necessary, but it helps to do your second row of right angle weave for your encasement. So let's go ahead and get all our materials together and we'll get started. So here's the project that I'm gonna show you how to make today. You can see I call it the reflecting pool because it reflects so many beautiful colors. Um, this is the one that I actually did while I was out of town. And when I took it out of the bag, you can see there are spots and scratches on the back where I did not protect it. When you flip it over and you look real close, on your piece, you can see all those spots where 
it got scratched. You can see them really, really good right there. Ah, and I see me. How funny is that? Um, but you can see those spots, and you can see anywhere where it got scratched. So just be aware of that. Like I said, your color A is going to be where we're going to actually do the encasement, and our color B is going to be out here on the outer edge. When you go to actually do these in different colors, it's going to totally change the look of your piece. So this is the exact same thing done in the exact same way, just with different colors, and you can see how much it changed. This uh, cabochon here is with the um, backlit purple haze and this one is backlit violet ice so you can really see the difference and then this is the difference in how the backs will look depending on whether you have it protected or not protected so to get started today i'm going to be using um, pastel bordeaux true two fire polish beads my size 15 seed bead is a Gold Luster Montana Toho. My color A11 is going to be Metallic Suede Blue. And my color B11 here is Semi Glazed Olive. And again, both of these are Tohos. So to get started, I'm going to thread my needle with the three yards of 1G. And I'm going to pick up four size 11 seed beads. Now I've cut, because I'm, I'm doing this in stages, I've cut this a little bit shorter than what you're actually gonna be using. Um, you wanna drop it all the way down to the tail and you're gonna take your needle and go back up through all four of those beads again. Hold those in place and pull your thread, whoops, all the way through. And then I'm gonna pull my two threads together just like this. So now we want to tie this into a couple of good knots. Because I mean, who wants a bad knot, right? And this is what your piece will look like at this point. So you can go through the bead to the left or the bead to the right of that knot. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go through the bead to the right here. So I'm just going to go right up through that bead. And I'm going to use these two middle fingers to kind of hold this tail down as I work so it's out of my way. You want to pick up three 11s. My thread's coming out at the top here, so I'm going to take my needle. I'm going to come right back up through that same bead so that it makes a circle. So now I have two right angle weave boxes. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come through two of the beads that I just added. So I'm going to go through this bead and this bead. Okay. Now I'm going to pick up three A's. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come down through the bead I'm coming out of so that it makes a circle. Okay, then I'm going to go through two of the beads that I just added. So I'm going through this one and this one. Okay, so at this point we're just going to continue. So we're going to pick up three A's. I'm going to go back up through the bead I'm coming out of so that it makes my circle. And then I'm going to come through two of the beads that I just added. Okay, and I'm going to show you one more time. So we'll pick up three A's. My thread's coming out of the bottom, so I'm going to come right back down through that same bead to make a circle. And then I'm going to go through the next two beads, which were two of the beads that I just added in that set of three. So when you do that, you now have one, two, three, four, five boxes. You want to continue this until you have a total of 25 right angle weave boxes. So once you have your strip of 25 right angle weave boxes, you can see it's going to be about three and a quarter inches or about eight and a half centimeters. Okay. 
I've gone ahead and I have put a needle onto my tail and got rid of that tail thread so it's out of my way. My thread is coming out of the top of the last bead that I'm coming out of here on this end. So I'm gonna pick up one A, I'm gonna come all the way across and I'm gonna come down through that single bead right here on the very end. I'm gonna hold this. I'm not gonna pull it all the way yet because I don't want it to pull together. So then I'm gonna pick up another A and this time I'm gonna come up through this side that I started with so that it's gonna pull all of this together into a circle. So I'm just gonna stick my fingers right under here, under that thread to hold the beads in place. And then I'm gonna pull so that now this has pulled into a circle of beads. Now, the last beads I added, if I pull these apart, is these two beads right here. So I want to reinforce this box one more time so that way it doesn't loosen up that box as I work the next row. So I'm just going to go through all those beads in that box one more time. And now that I've done that, I'm going to come through one of the beads here along what I will now call the top of my piece, okay? Now, you can definitely work this row off with no problem, but at this point, this is where I find that the one inch wooden dowel comes in really handy because you can see that it fits the beadwork really, really great. So right now, I'm coming out of that single bead. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here for you. Whoop, there we go. Okay, so I'm coming out of this bead right here. This is my first box for the next row. So I'm going to pick up three A's, and I'm going to come back through that same bead so that it makes a circle. Okay. So when you pull it, this is what your piece will look like. So now I'm gonna go up through the bead right above where my thread is exiting, and I'm gonna hold this in place as I pull. Okay, that's the only one we're gonna pick up three beads at. From here on out, we're gonna pick up two. So I'm picking up two A's, I'm going to come back through to, okay, I'm going to come to the next A here along the top edge, and I'm going to come back through that bead going from right to left so that the needle is pointing towards the beadwork that I've already started. And I'm going to pull that on through. I'm going to go up through the bead right above where my thread is exiting, which is going to be that middle bead the connection bead between our two boxes. I'm gonna hold that in place. Okay, I'm gonna go through the two beads that I added in the step. So you can do this um, by going through both of them at once, but again, you won't get a nice defined box. So I go through them one at a time. So I'm gonna go through that one, this one, and then through the next bead on the row, which is gonna be this next A right here. Okay, two A's, and we wanna again make our right angle weave box, so I'm gonna come down through the connecting bead right here between these two boxes. So it's just that single bead. I'm gonna hold that, put my thumb on it, pull the thread down. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through the bead to the right, which is gonna be this one here, and then up through the first bead that I added in this row, which is gonna be this A right here. So through that bead to the right, and then up through the speed right above where my thread is exiting. Okay, I'm gonna show you these two boxes one more time. So we're gonna pick up two 
A's. I'm going to come to the next A along the top and I'm going to go through that bead going from left to right. I'm going to go up through the bead right above where my thread is exiting. Through the two beads I just added, which is this one and this one. And I'm going to go through both these at one time so you can see what that looks like as well. So you can go, well, and look, it ain't even going to let me do it right now. <laughs> How funny is that? There we go. Okay, so if you want to go through both beads at one time, you can do it. I don't suggest it, but you can do it. So you're going to go through those two beads and then through the next A along the top, which is going to be this A right here. Now for those of you who did my bursting flower pendant, you'll remember that one had two colors. We used two colors um, to so you could see what we were doing. So if you have a hard time with the single color, you may want to go back to that bursting flower and watch that one with the two colors. So again, I'm going to pick up two A's. I'm going to go down through this little side connection bead between these two boxes that I'm creating. Hold that bead in place. Now I'm going to go through the bead to the right and then the bead right above where the thread would be exiting. So I'm going to go through here and here. All right, now what you're going to do is you are going to continue doing these same steps for the boxes until you only have, you've gone all the way around and you only have one box left here to create. I have gone all the way around now so that I only have one box left to complete. I am coming out of the bead here to the left. I'm going to pick up an A and I'm going to go through the A directly across from where I'm coming out. So it's going to be this first little side connection bead on this first box that I made. And I'm going to pull it down. Now, I'm going to go through this A to the left, which is going to be the middle row of A's. Pull that through. I'm going to go up through the A right above where the thread's coming out. And then I'm going to go through the A to the right. Doesn't matter if you go to the right or to the left, but I'm going to go through the one to the right. Now, I'm going to slide it off of my piece because I'm ready for my 15s. So, from where I'm coming out, I'm going to pick up one 15, and I'm going to come through the next A here along the top. One 15, come through the next A. I'm going to do this all the way around on this side, picking up an A, and coming, or I'm sorry, picking up a 15 and coming through the next A along this edge. As you work, this piece will start to cup up as you pull it, and that's exactly what you want it to do. So go all the way around, adding your 15s in between the A's, and then go through it again to reinforce the row. I've gone all the way around now, and I'm exiting an A along the bottom of the piece. You want to stitch up through the beads to come out of any one of these here along the top. So I'm just going to go through the A right above where my thread is exiting. Again, it doesn't matter if you go to the left or to the right, but I'm right-handed, so I'll go to the right. Then up through an A and then through an A to the right. Now, this is where I got the most questions about this. So you're gonna put your cabochonian face up and what you have to do is you have to pull the sides up on your piece, okay? The biggest thing is you wanna try and keep it centered on the back. So as of right now, you can see that all my sides are pretty well 
the same on here. What we're going to do next is really going to help to pull these sides up and hold them together. So I'm picking up a 15 and I'm going to go through the next A. And when I go through that A, I'm going to pull the thread in an upward motion. Put on a 15, go through the next A. Again, pulling it in an upward motion so it helps to pull the encasement up. 15, go through the next one. Your biggest thing you want to do as you work this row is you want to try and keep it as even as possible on your stone. So what you're gonna do is you're just going to keep working this row, putting in a 15 and going through the next A all the way around. And I'm gonna go through it to reinforce it one or two more times, depending on how I feel it's holding. Okay, so this is what it's looking like so far. I've gone all the way around now, adding my 15s, and my piece can still move because this is a glass cabochon. You wanna really um, pull the thread nice and tight and reinforce this top as you work. As you reinforce, you're not adding any beads. You're just going through the A's and the 15 here along the top and pulling it nice and tight. And I keep my thumb where I was at because that kind of helps to keep the tension tight um, as I am stitching through the next few beads. Because each time I pull this, I can literally feel it tightening up more and more. Um, like I said, the biggest thing is you just want to keep it even in the encasement because when you work the next row, you are going to be able to tell if you did not get it even. Um, so just be sure and go through and reinforce this top again really well. So I've gone all the way around now reinforcing. One way you can tell if you got it even is if you flip it to the side, you can see where the black beading foundation is and then where the silver is. And you just want to keep that centered along this middle row. So I'm coming out of an A on the top, so I'm gonna come down through the A right below where my thread is exiting, and then through the A to the right. You can go through the A to the left, doesn't matter. I'm going to the right. So when I flip it around and we're looking at the front, um, you can see I'm coming out now of that middle row of A's. This is where our B's are going to come in. So just like we started the second row here, we're going to work a row of right angle weave. So I'm going to pick up three B's and I'm going to come back through the A my thread is coming out of so that it makes a circle. And I'm going to pull that. I'm going to go up through the B right above where my thread's exiting. And I'm going to pick up two B's. I'm going to come to the next A in this middle row, and I'm going to come back through that A going from left to right. Pull that through so that now I'm going to go up through the B right above where my thread's exiting, through the two B's I just added, and then through the next A along this middle row. So up through the B right above where my thread is exiting, through the two B's that I just added, and then the next A along this middle row. Pick up two B's. I'm gonna come down through the side connection B right here. Through the A to the left, this was the A that I just went through. And then up through the B, right above where my thread is exiting. Do a couple more here to show you again. So it's two B's. 
I'm going to come to the next A along this outer edge and I'm going to go through that bead going from left to right. Go up through the B right above where my thread is exiting. Through the two B's that I just added. And then through the next A along this middle row. Going to pick up 2B. I'm going to come down through this little side connection bead here. Then I'm going to go through the A to the left and then up through the B right above where my thread is exiting. I'm going to continue to work all the way around until I only have one box left here to complete. So now I've gone all the way around adding my row of B's and I'm to where I only have one box left here that I need to add. So I'm coming out of the B here, this side B on the right. I'm going to pick up one B. I'm going to come right across to the B right from it and I'm going to come down through that B bead. I'm going to go through the A that's going to be to the right, which is this one right here. Okay. Then up through the B right above where the thread is exiting and then the B to the left. You can go to the right or to the left. It does not matter. Now you're going to work another round of writing a weave off of what you've already done. And what this is going to do as you work, it's going to seem really far apart where you're adding these, but don't worry because what's going to happen is this row that you're going to add is going to cup. And when it does, you want it to cup towards the back. Okay. Now, um, I also wanted to show you that I threw this cab in with some other stuff and again, now you can see where it's gotten scratched when I threw it in with some other pieces. So just be careful not to store these with other things so that you won't get scratches on your cab. So once you add that second row, you can see how it really cups towards the back of your piece. And that's what you want. So I'm coming out of an B right here along the back of my piece. And I'm gonna pick up an A and go through the next B that's sticking up. Pick up an A, go through the next B. I'm gonna do this all the way around. And as I go around, I'm just going to pop these beads into place. And you'll notice that what happens is when you add the A's, in between the bees, it's going to really pull the bees downward so that they want flap up when you wear it. So it's going to really pull it down here and it's going to define this middle row right here really well for us because that's what we're going to be working off of from these bees. Okay, so just continue around the circle, putting A's in between each of your B's here along the edge. Once you've gone all the way around, this is what your piece will look like. There is no need to reinforce this circle again because it's pulled down exactly like you need it to be. So you get this really cool layered look here along the back. Now, I'm coming out of a B. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go up through a B right above where my thread is exiting and then through a B to the right. Again, it doesn't matter if you go to the right or to the left. Now this is where my true twos are going to come into play and you can see that the true twos are cut off on each end. This is what gives them their true two millimeter size. So I'm picking up a true two and I'm going to go through the next B 
along the middle row here. And what that does is that's gonna pop that bead perfectly into place. So another true two, go through the next B. A true two, go through the next B. And as you work all the way around, these beads will go right into each of those little holes that we need to cover up. And then you'll be ready for the next step. So what you wanna do is go all the way around like I just told you to. And when you get back and you go through this last B, step up by going through the first two millimeter that you added. Once you've gone all the way around, this is what your piece will look like. And if you wanted to, you could stop here because it's a really cute piece in itself. Um, I did want to show you, let me find the two pictures here. Okay, so the lady who tested this for me, she tested this with the size eight seed beads. And up until this point, those size eights worked, okay? So here where these golds are, the golds are the size eight seed beads. So you will see that up until this point, they work. So now, we are ready to do the next step and we are coming out of a two millimeter. We're gonna pick up a B and go through the next two millimeter. Okay. We're gonna do this all the way around, picking up a B and going through the next true two. All the way around so that it's gonna give us a little point between each of these twos. When you get all the way back around and you've gone through the last two, step up through the first B that you added. So one quick thing that I wanted to show you with the 1G is some people say that their thread gets twisted up or it gets knotted. And it's the same way with Fireline. And one way you can do this is to hold the needle up and then run your fingers in a downward motion over your thread. And what this does is this gets any twist that you have in your thread out of the thread and then you're ready to start working again. That will help you tremendously as far as knots and things such as that nature. I'm coming out of a B that I added in the previous row. And so now you are to the peacoat section. I like to have fun with this and I like to pick up a B, an A, and a B and then go through the next B. So what that's gonna do, that's gonna make the point a different color, so it kinda brings in the blue that's here into here. If you don't necessarily like the look of two colors, and I'll show you here. So see here, um, you can see where I've done it here on these points, and then I've done it on these points. So it just gives it a fun little different color. So if, like I said, if you don't like that, you can use all B's, all A's, whatever you wanna do. Now I'm gonna pick up a true two and go through the next B sticking up. You can see that true two is gonna jump in right on top of the one below it. Now it's a B, an A, and a B and I'm gonna go through the next B sticking up. And again, it's gonna give me a little point, then I'm gonna pick up a true two and go through the next B along the edge. I'm gonna continue adding a point and a true two until I've gone all the way around. Now that I've gone all the way around, you can see that when I hold this sideways, that the row is straight and everything lays really nicely. The, my tester who tested this for me, when she sent me a picture of it, she said, if you use the eights, for this row, what happens is it makes this very wavy and they won't lay straight, okay? So when she went in to add these, she ended up actually even adding another row on top to see if that would work, if it would hold those down, and it didn't. So that is one thing if you try to use the eights. Now, this looks really good in itself, but we wanna do one more step to kind of reinforce this row, I guess I would say. 
sometimes if you have some of your points and they're not per perfectly pointy, what you can do is you can go through the B skip the A, and then go through the two Bs there. And what that does, once you pull that through, is that forces this bead to stay popped out and upward. Now I'm just gonna continue on through the next two millimeter B, and then my B here. pull it back out of the A. So now I'll skip the A and I'll go all the way through the two B's, the two, the two B's, and then I'll skip the A and keep going around just like that to make that bead pop up if it's not already. If it's popped up for you, all this is gonna do is help to make this even stiffer and help it to stay uh, nice and popped up. If it doesn't pop up, what you can do is you can take your needle in here and gently pull in an outward motion. So like when I get here, if it doesn't pop out, I'm gonna gently pull at an outward motion. So I'm gonna go all the way around and kind of reinforce and, and skip these A's. And then when you come back around, you want to exit out of any one one of these point A's to add our bell. So I've gone all the way around doing those reinforcement steps and this has really made this stiff. So if you do the reinforcement, you don't have to worry about it moving around. I'm coming out of an A at any one of my points. Now, in this project, I'm gonna give you the counts to a bale that will fit over a two millimeter leather. You can make this bale as big or as small as you want by the amount of beads that you add. So like I said, I haven't actually completed this one because I haven't decided exactly what I'm gonna put on it yet. I think I'm gonna do a beaded rope. So that's why I've just kind of left this one be. But basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna be using our 15s. For the two millimeter leather, or say like a chain, I'm gonna pick up 11 15s. And I'm gonna come back through this bead that I'm coming out of to make a circle. Now, if this is the exact thing, you know what you want, go ahead and reinforce this again. If you need this bell bigger, add more beads in this circle in an odd number of beads. Okay, because now I'm gonna pick up five 15s. I'm gonna count up one, two, three, four, five, and I'm gonna go through the sixth bead here in that first row. Then I'm gonna pick up five 15s. And I'm gonna come back through the A to complete the bell. So now what happens is your stringing material actually goes through those two loops. So it would be just like this. So like I said, if you need a bigger loop, no problem. But whatever you decide to do, go ahead and reinforce this bell several times and then you can tie it off to where you will be able to put it on some sort of chain, cord, leather, whatever you want to, to have a beautiful new pendant. I did wanna show you one more thing about the pendant. So this is the one that I did in the video today, and this was the very first one that I did originally. And you can see they have little points of 15. So if you're like, hey, Kelly, that's just not floating my boat, then this might be something that you want to consider. It's doing little arches with your size 15 seed beads. The one thing I will tell you about this using 15s is that those 15s are not going to sit pretty and straight for you. They're going to be very wavy. So when you look at it face on, it looks pretty good. But when you look at it to the side, it doesn't look as great. 
So just be aware of that. So that is the difference or an alternate that you can do between the two pendants. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make the reflecting pool pendant. I do have kits available for all three colors that I showed you today, along with a written pattern on my website, which is off the beaded path beadstore.com. Now the green one that I did today, I told you all the colors in that video, but the other two color schemes can be found on that written pattern. So just to kind of let you know that. Also, the earrings I have on today are the hoopla earrings, and the ring I have on is the double daisy ring. The bracelet I have on here is big crochet, and all of these can be found, again, on my website. While you're at my website, be sure to look at the free pattern section, because I just put on 18 word graph and picture graph charts of 18 carrier beads. These are going to be for um, odd count. I did these in Christmas colors because a group of us here at in Forest City are doing a carrier bead exchange with those Christmas colors. So there's 18 word graphs and picture graphs on there for you under the free pattern section. Also, if you're interested, I've got two really great um, retreats coming up. The first one is going to be coming up in April of 2019. Um, I had this same exact retreat in August of this year, and everybody loved it. There were a lot of people who weren't able to come, so they requested another retreat. So in the very beginning of April of 2019, I'm going to have this retreat again. The retreat is going to be held in my hometown of Forest City, North Carolina. It's $75 to hold your spot. The whole retreat itself is only $250, and that's over a three-day span. You can find more information about this until the retreat is full on my website, You'll see um, the, I think it's on the main page. Just please, please, please be sure to click on it and read the whole item description so you know everything about it before you pay a deposit. I only have 20 spots open and nine of those spots are already taken. So um, if you want to come, definitely check that out. Also, um, this year I'm going to Prague um, with Triple M Tours out of Canada, and it sold out so quickly that they have asked me to do a trip for 2019. So if you weren't able to get in on the 2018 trip, I do have a trip coming to Prague in 2019. It's going to be November of that year. I'll be teaching, I think, a day and a half on the trip, and then the rest of the time, we're going to be checking out the Christmas markets and bead stores stores and all that good stuff. So you can go to their website, triplemtours.ca to find out more details about that, but it's $99 to hold your spot. And then you have almost a full year. If you go on right now, you have almost a full year to pay for this trip on a payment plan. So definitely, if you've ever wanted to travel abroad, this would be a really cool trip to go on with me. So I hope that maybe possibly you'll get a chance to check out one of those two retreats that I have coming up in 2019. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.